I was reading this the other day and I thought, this is an awesome way to open up this service. The first thing it says, and this is to the congregation, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a voice of joy. Yes. God has ascended, gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm of wisdom. Amen. Father God, we thank you right now, Lord, that we as a congregation today, no matter how big or small we are right now, that we will enter into your courts with praise and with thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sinned against us, forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come, Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven right here in my heart father let your kingdom come father let your will be done on earth as in heaven right here in my heart give us this day our daily bread forgive us forgive us as we forgive the ones who have sinned against us forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. It's yours. All yours, all yours, forever and ever. The kingdom is yours. It's yours, it's yours. All yours, all yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory is yours. It's yours, it's yours. Let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart.
everybody through all of those songs that we were singing this morning um, they were more of a prayer 
they were all about all the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God and all those things that he's bestowed on us. And sometimes, I, I've talked about this before, sometimes we, um, there's, <laughs> this isn't how I really want to say this, but there's right and then there's almost right. So today I felt like we were really praying today to the Lord and just thanking him for all of his goodness. And I just, I said this a couple weeks ago. I had this revelation moment when I was listening to, to a minister several years ago, and he was talking about the provision of God and the healing nature of God and all these things. And he said, God doesn't provide. He is provision. And so when you got up, I was thinking the same thing. God doesn't have goodness. He is goodness. He is faithful. Pastor Steve doesn't turn on Pastor Steve. Pastor Steve is Pastor Steve. He is Steve the husband. He is Steve the dad. He is Steve the grandpa. He is Steve the son. He is those things. He doesn't just turn them on and off. So when we were singing that today, I was thinking, he hasn't just been faithful all of my life. He's faithful. He is the word faithful. He is the goodness. He is all of it. So next time you sing those, thong, those songs, they're not dependent on us. He is those things and worship him for those things. All right. Anyway, a little note. <laughs> all right. And now we have offering so uh if you want to uh turn to john six um i'm just gonna read a little bit of this uh, you guys will recall recall this this is when jesus calls himself the bread of life i'm just gonna start in verse 25 so what happened right, uh, preceding this scene what was going on is that jesus you know fed the thousands and uh, he went away, and now people are looking for him. And they find him, and this is what he says. So, when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate uh, your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal." I love that last for, for for on him God the Father has set his seal. That means whatever whatever Jesus says, whatever he does, it's God's stamp of approval. It's anyway. But what I want, what I really want to focus there is that that verse in twenty seven: Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life. What I want to sort of like come across, what I want, what I really want to understand today uh, as a body, because I think we forget this sometimes. I think. I think certain things in church, and there's true in life, but it's in church, certain things become routine, and so we lose the eternal aspect, that internal importance of, of something that we can do. Um, I mean, Jesus said, like, like how, is, how easy is it to give a glass of water to somebody? But what Jesus said, when you give a glass of water in my name to somebody, it's as, it's as if you do it to me. So, so there's this in, eternal ramification with things that we do for the kingdom that I really want to make sure we're not neglecting and to understand how vital, important, and awesome that is. So when we give, don't let it be a routine is my point. There are eternal ramifications with our giving that builds a kingdom. It's not just it's not just a, a, a Sunday thing that's on the schedule and so we do it. It's it's this eternal thing that we get to participate. We get to be a blessing from God by giving, and in that giving, this eternal kingdom that we cannot see. We cannot see with our physical eyes, but we're not meant to see with our physical eyes. This, this eternal thing is being created by your giving, and I just, I just want to remind you today that your giving is awesome, and, and it does something eternal that even if we can't see it, it's building something that lasts for eternity. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this offering, Lord. Thank you that it's just going to do so much more than what we're, we can imagine, so much more than we can see, Father. There's literally people's lives being changed and people literally being, being given into the kingdom because of the giving today. Lord, help us remember that, Lord. Do what you can do with this, Father. You, you're, you're the 
greatest bank in the world. You're, you're the greatest thing we can give to. And Lord, we just want to give to you. We're blessed to be a blessing, Lord. We just love to give into your kingdom today in your name. Amen. I will declare God is good every time, every time. He is faithful. Amen. God is good. I just had to do that. I had to get you, your voices out there. Amen. The power comes when it's your voice singing how good God is. Amen. It's communion day. It's a wonderful day. And, uh, y'all, I was emotional today, even in prayer. And I'm going, Lord, how? Oh, and music was playing. And I'm going, if I'm this emotional, how am I going to make it through communion, Lord? Because it's based on relationship. But we do communion. We try to do it at least once a month. And Jesus instituted communion at the Last Supper. Jesus himself started it. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. It talks about it in Luke 22. Now, Jesus is establishing communion. Now, remember, <clears throat> when there was the Last Supper, Jesus was meeting with his disciples. He starts to do this, establish communion. It's at the same time as Passover. So in the religious sense, in the, the Jews would celebrate annually the Passover of what God did. And how he, he had them do certain things. And to use animal blood to put it on the doorposts. That was then. Jesus is now. Jesus was back then too. But right now, Jesus is saying something new. Say something new. He wants us to do. Something new. He wants us to do. From now on. That's the power of communion. Communion is based on relationship with Jesus. And so in the old covenant, you're still a slave to sin. Animals' blood doesn't do it. But it reminds the people that there is a consequence and death related to sin. So in the old covenant, when you're still a slave, in the new covenant, you come into the kingdom of life. In the old covenant where they applied the blood... And the Passover celebration was part of that. Now Jesus is saying, celebrate me. Now we apply the blood of Jesus to our heart. It's no longer to the doorposts of some thing that was built by man. It's now inside. Nobody can go inside your body. You know, your body has a blood-brain barrier that it cannot be crossed with certain things. And drugs try to cross that barrier. God put a blood barrier. It's the blood of Jesus. That's the blood barrier on the inside of you. So when you come and celebrate communion, it's looking, I would, when we would get it in a different way. We would get it in a cup, in a little thing like this, but it would be separate because the, the bread's on top. And I would just look at that cup. And then sometimes in moments of intimacy, I would share my cup with somebody else in the body of Christ. I would exchange. And I just, it's such an important time. Communion is to, it's a, like a two-sided coin. Where on one side, it's the cost of sin. On the other side, it's the redemptive power of Jesus. And we're resurrected and raised. So it's a two-sided coin. Well, it's the same thing now as it was yesterday. When we take communion, we reflect. You know, I wanted to read this one passage. Paul also was under instruction of the Lord to teach about communion to the Corinthian church. And he says this in chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. And then I've slung in there. A little dagger. <laughs> Remember we talked about it at, at our women's conference about the word in verse 31. So this is what it says in verse 23. For I receive from the Lord. I'm doing the ESV version. For I receive from the Lord that I, what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body. His body was broken for us. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it. In rem as often as. Say as often as. So we're supposed to do it often. Okay? Just this simple scripture there. As often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And verse 31 says this, but if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. 
Sometimes we look at, why is that person judging me? Well, if you ain't going to do it yourself, then God's going to try and get the word to you. Something needs to be changed. So when we do communion, we judge ourselves. And that's why it's so important. The Bible talks about not perceiving the way things are. And we, we die too soon or we, we go through some things because we haven't judged the things that we're doing, the way that we're thinking. Um, I, I was mentioning in just a moment for women um, that I do on Saturdays on Facebook. If there's somebody, when you think of them, and the thought of them makes you pull back, feel sad, then you need to take that person to the Lord in prayer and say, Father, I need you to cover them in love because I need to be free. So that's what communion's all about. When you come into the intimacy of relationship with Jesus, communion is for those who've accepted Jesus Christ, that they have said, yes, he paid for my sin for all time. Then you come to communion to remember what you did. So it's not for the unbeliever. They don't understand the power of the salvation experience. We've been washed, completely washed in the blood of the Lamb. But do we get messy? Yes. Is the Spirit of God still on the inside of us? Yes. But do we need to say, sorry, Lord? Yes. That's what communion is. Just coming back and saying, Lord, you purchased everything I ever need, but I just want to take a moment. If there's something I've said that's hurt your heart, if there's something I'm doing, am I living with somebody? Well, that right there violates God's word, so you already know the answer to that one. Am, am I gossiping about somebody? Well, you already know the word on that. You know that ain't right. So you say, Father, I'm sorry I said something about somebody. It just comes and gives you the clean slate. It's not an act of work. It's a work of the heart. It's not an act of work. It's a work of the heart. So cherish every time we have communion together. And let's get ready. Pastor Steve, would you come up and, and um, let's just come through. And He is faithful. So like Jesus did, we take the bread, we break it, because that's what he did for us. Father, we take this, just as you commanded us to. We take this bread, because your body... The son's Jesus' body was broken for us, and we thank you for that, that our body doesn't have to be broken with sickness because your body was already broken for it. Your body already took the stripes, so we don't have to self-flagellate ourselves. We don't have to tear ourselves down anymore. You took that self-incrimination on the cross on your body. So we take this to self-health. We take it to spiritual health in Jesus' name. And now I thank you, Father, for the juice. I got to be careful. I'm holding my Peel that sucker off. Look into that. Blood actually looks a lot thicker, and it's different looking. But this is juice to typify what he did on our behalf. He took care of all the mental anguish you would ever have. He took care of the soul of man. That's not a muscle tissue. It's the fabric of the essence of his personality and being. God took care of that. If you were raised in a home that was abusive, God took care of that right here. As you drink this cup, there's healing that goes to the intricate workings of your mind, your heart, and your soul that cannot be touched with a scalpel, that cannot be designed by any human being. But this God himself provided Everything you would need for any agony pain on the inside that's untouchable. But God touched it. He touched it by the blood. So much so, he formed that blood-brain barrier. The blood of Jesus where no demon can cross, no demon can undo. Because Jesus undid all the demons when he rose from the dead. So we celebrate his resurrection power on the inside of our body. And we take this by faith, knowing your work was complete and still works in us. And according to 1 John 1, 9, when we confess our sins, you're faithful and just. And to cleanse us, the same healing, cleansing power of the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name, we receive this. Let's partake. Amen. Come on up, Pastor Steve. Praise God. Well, let's get into this. Um, let's go to Proverbs chapter 3. We are now doing the you in trust. So the first T, T-R-U-S-T, T is take him at his word. R is to rest. U is understanding. Understanding. So in Proverbs chapter 3, 
and verse 5 and 6. It says this. I got my Bible right here. Hold on, she says. And I'm going to hold on. There she is. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not a little bit, the whole enchilada. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for truth. We thank you for grace impartations. We thank you, Lord, for truth deposits. We thank you, Father, that we have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to us and that we'll not just hear it today, but we'll do it to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, it says we are to trust, but let's not lean on our own understanding. It doesn't say do not use your own understanding. It doesn't say that. It says that trust in him with all your heart, but do not lean on your own understanding. I mean, look at, look at Proverbs 3.13. And it says, blessed is a person who finds wisdom and one who obtains understanding. So I'm going to come from this point of view that we need understanding, but we don't, what we can't totally lean on ours. We want his understanding on things, but we don't want to lean on ours. Okay, because sometimes we, what do we do? We try and figure it out. We try and figure it out. Something's going on in my life. Something's going on in my family's life. Stuff's going on. And we're going, how, why, this, that. No, hold on. Don't lean on yours. Get his. Okay, then Proverbs 4, 7, it says, the beginning of wisdom is this. Acquire wisdom. And with all your possessions, acquire understanding. So we need understanding. We need wisdom. And then in Proverbs 2, and verse 6, and you'll, you'll so, there's a pattern here. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. What do you have here? We've got knowledge, we've got understanding, and we've got wisdom. And if you just read the first five chapters of Proverbs, this is repeated over and over again. These three words are repeated over and over again. And often they are uh, coupled, they're, they're connected. God's not opposed to us having understanding, okay? Just don't lean on it, yours and mine. It, it's, it, it would be like, it'd be like this, this, is, this is my understanding right here. If I put all my weight, if it wouldn't move, if I put all my weight on that, then I am leaning on this. I'm leaning on my understanding instead of trusting in him. There's a difference there. He wants us to gain understanding. What what, what kind of understanding? Well, I want the understanding of the word. And then when things come up and I can't figure it out, don't lean on what I can't figure out. Lean on what he says in his word and trust it. Trust it, okay? Um, Let's go back to Proverbs 2 and chapter 1. Chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if you receive my words, that's, that's a big, big if there. Yes. You have to receive his word, Amen. whether you want it or not. And treasure my commandments within you. This is interesting because the first, the second, third word there, my son, if. I did a sermon on this whole thing right here called if then. If then. Make your ear attentive wisdom, incline your heart to understanding, for if you cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, see, he wants us to have it. If you cry out for insight, raise your voice for understanding, if, here's more ifs, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for understanding, then, if, then, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. There we go. Understanding, knowledge, wisdom. All connected. See, it, it's, it's like, uh, here's, how it, here, here's how it breaks down. Uh, go ahead, Lynn, and, and put those, uh, 
that definition up there. Knowledge is the acquisition of facts or observation. Knowledge is the acquisition of facts or observation. Understanding is the explanation of facts or interpretation. And lastly, wisdom is the application of facts. I don't know how F-A-X came in there. I was voice texting this. It came out facts. <laughs> and I didn't spell check, of all people who didn't spell check. <laughs> wisdom is the application of facts, or it's the application, okay? Now, aren't those great definitions there explaining it? I'm brilliant, aren't I? No, I got it from somebody else. But it was really good. I thought, this is real, this makes sense. And so how could I, how could I, the best way I can break that down in something that I understand that you may not understand, but it works for me, okay? And, and I actually did this. I was looking at my notes. I actually did this sermon back in 08. And I used a, a, an illustration I thought would work. And we were at Tremont at the time. And I put, uh, uh, I, I think I had, they, they had some kind of a, maybe it was carpet or whatever, but I, I brought in a, a, a golf club with a plastic ball, and, uh, and, and I actually, do you remember that? And I hit the golf ball, man, I hit it perfect, man, right down the, right down the sanctuary, you know? So to me, see, I have, when it comes to golf, and you may not, uh, and, and, listen, you, there, there is a method to the madness, you just don't walk up there and swing a club. People do that, and they, they're, they're called hackers, okay? So there's actually a method to, to swing the golf club, and I have knowledge of that swing, okay? That's the first thing. I have knowledge of it. And then, and I can explain the game. I can explain shots, how you do this. I, when I play with guys, I show them, hey, do this. They do it when they do it, and they do it. That you know, they, they pull it off, they go, oh, wow. And I go, okay, that's 20 bucks. And um, so I, you know, so then, so when I can explain it, then, you know, it works. So now when I apply what I know and what I understand, and then I do it, I have wisdom in the game. Okay? Now, uh, and, and so, because I'm, I'm applying what I understand and what I know, what I know and what I understand, and then I apply it, and it works. Unfortunately, it doesn't always, because I don't do what I should have done, and I go, "That was a dumb shot." Why? Because I didn't do what I know to do. It's the same thing for us. God, we know what His Word says. We know it. We even understand it. But when we don't apply it, and we wonder, why did that happen? Well, there's a reason. Because we didn't apply it. We knew it, we understood it, but we didn't do it. So when you know something, you understand it. You can explain. I mean, that's what teachers do. I'm not, I mean, I teach, I teach and preach. Amen? Okay, some guys just teach. They just, they're there, and they just explain, explain, explain. Okay? There's, there's, here's the difference. Jesus, people say, well, it's all the same, teaching, preaching. No, 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 no. Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus taught and preached. What's the difference? Teaching is explaining. Preaching is proclaiming. So I kind of mix them together. But the point is this. We know what it says. We can explain. Like, let's just take faith. Let's take trust. We know, we know what it is. We know what we're supposed to do. But then again, we don't always apply it. So there's the key. We have to apply it. But when we apply it and it works, we go, wow, it works. There's wisdom, and it all comes from him. See, the, in, in James, he says, the wisdom that we seek is a godly wisdom, not what the world has. See, we can choose to be self-confident. That is leaning on my understanding. So we don't want to lean on our understanding 
and leave God out. We want to have his understanding and have him in it. Amen. Now look at Proverbs, or not Proverbs, Psalm, Psalm 32 and verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will advise you with my eye upon you. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding. Do we have any horses in here? Do we have any mules? No. Good. Doc, get the bridle out of your mouth. Okay? Um, so we don't, want, we, we don't want to be stubborn, all right? Get knowledge, get understanding, and apply it. Don't be like the mule who says, I don't need it. I don't need it. That's what we don't want. Proverbs 16 and verse 22. I missed that. I don't have that in there. You got it, Lindsay? Yeah. Understanding is a fountain of life to the one who has it. But the discipline of fools is folly. Say that again. It's really good. Understanding, when you get understanding, you have knowledge, you gain knowledge from the Word of God, you're reading it, you're getting knowledge. Oh, I, and the light, how many know when the light goes off? Yeah. The entrance of His Word brings light, and you go, oh, I've, I've, I've read that a thousand times, or a hundred, or whatever. I told you a million times, don't exaggerate. Um, uh, but you, 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 know, you get something, you go, boom, and you, what is that? That's understanding. You see it, you, you know it, but now it's an, oh, I've never done no. Okay, now apply it. Now apply it. That's wisdom. So, but that understanding is a life to the one who has it. And it's, it's life because you understand it and you apply it. But if you, that's a discipline. That's a discipline to get knowledge, get understanding, and then to apply it. And that is wisdom, but that's a discipline. You have to do it. You have to, we have to be not just hearers, but doers. That's why I always pray that for every time we pray, that we would be not just hearer. A hearer is not blessed. A doer is blessed. The doer is blessed. If we put all our weight on ourselves, we usually end up in some kind of ruin. That's something else we saw. Lots of ruins. Saw so lots and lots of ruins. I mean, I remember hearing, oh, wait till you see the, you know, uh, this one guy, I, I was talking to some, uh, they were actually Americans, and I was talking to him. Oh, I was up on the Acropolis there in Athens. You know, it's amazing. Oh, by the way, you know, we went right there where Paul preached in, in, in Acts 17. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's really, it's, it's awesome to think. This is where he preached. This is where he preached. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Then you just look up the hill, and there's the Acropolis. And, but anyway, I was up there, and a guy said, have you been to the Roman uh, Agora? I go, no, no. He goes, oh, you got to go to there. You got to go there. Oh, okay, so everybody took off in different places. Annie was, uh, I think she was kind of worn out. Now, the Acropolis, and, and, and Aaron had told us, hey, uh, everywhere we've been walking, it's flat. And, and it was. But when you get to Greece, and when we came in the airport, and I was like, Ooh, there's a lot of hills around here. And, and so the Acropolis is a walk. It is a walk and up. And anyway, so this guy said, you know, and I wanted to see this temple of uh, Hephaestus, and, which is a Greek god of fire, you know, and, and uh, the craftsmen and uh, people that work uh, iron and stuff like that. And this temple is amazing. It's all almost completely... Uh, uh, I mean, the pillars are all up. The roof is on it. I mean, this thing is like thousands of years old. And so I went to this, uh, this Roman Agora where it's uh, this huge ruin. And all there is, and like this guy was pumping this thing up. I get there, and it's all ruins about this tall. I mean, there's nothing left except the, the temple and then this other building they built. And I thought, what happened? Well, part of it is, they would literally, things sat for a long time, and then the locals, they didn't have any, they had no idea of the antiquity, and so they just started tearing stuff down and use it to build their houses. 
And so there's, it's just ruined. But what happens is, and sometimes the things that they, wait, they built them, if the mo ground moved or whatever, if things happened, they, the, they leaned in the wrong way and ruined. Because they're leaning, if you lean the wrong way, if you're leaning all on your understanding and always depending on your understanding and not getting God's answers on things, we're bound for ruin. But you're smarter than that, all of you, all of you. So, Proverbs sixteen twenty two. Proverbs sixteen twenty two. Is that right here? I don't have that one either. Uh, oh, I already said that. It well, is wellspring of life? Okay. So, remember the. Uh, I think about this old hymn, which is a great old hymn. Leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting, safe and secure. From all alarm, lean on his everlasting arms. We cannot fail when we lean on his arms. Amen? And then, so let's take this where we've gone so far. What is trust? T, take God at his word. R, rest. Once you've taken his word on something, then believe it, receive it. Like we were talking today, like that's... that's you know, it's so important in prayer. You know, it says, do, uh, do not be anxious for anything, but with prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God with thanksgiving. Why would he say that? Why would Paul put that in there by the Holy Ghost? Why would he put it in there? Because when you are thankful in your prayer, you believe that you have received it. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you're thanking him. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, Therefore, whatever things you ask, Mark eleven twenty four. 24, therefore, 23, whatever you ask, therefore, what's the therefore, therefore? Speaking to the mountain. He says, whatever you therefore, whenever you pray, believe that you have received and you shall have those things which you prayed for. See, most people, we pray it, and then most believers, myself included, well, especially before I was a believer, you know, I just prayed and hoped. I didn't believe that he would do it. So when we, we, every time we pray, be thankful. Thank him because you're thanking him. Why? Because you believe that you have received it. It's not complicated. So lastly, trust is faith. Now, this is one of my favorite all-time scenes in a movie. Indiana Jones. First one. So he's got this book, right? And this book is telling him what to do, where to find, because he's, what is he looking for? The Ark of the Covenant, right? Looking for the Ark of the Covenant. And so he comes to this, he comes to this, this point, and there's this deep chasm. And, and he looks there, and I can't remember exactly what it said. Maybe somebody does. And, but he said, you know, you've got to take a step. There's a bridge there. You can't see it but you got to take that step. The leap of faith. That's what it was, the leap of faith. That's what was in the book, right? And so he goes, okay. And then there it was, the path. And that's what it takes for us. We have to step what we think is nothing, but we have to, le don't lean on your understanding. Lean on his, what he has said, what his word has said, and take that step, whether it makes sense or not. I've had to do it. I, we had to do it to start this work. Yeah. I, would, I, got, I tell you, Pesty, were you scared? Yes. Not spitless. I could still spit. <laughs> but but, but it, it, was, it, was, it was uncharted territory. Yeah. It was like, how am I going to get over there? But I just... Just got to do it. If you know, I, I remember being taught at, at Bible school. It, you know, those he, he those he calls, he equips. And so I said, "Well, I know I'm called," because we had a Bible school teacher. He came in and he did everything he could to convince us not to go into ministry. Everything. We all walked out of there. People are like. Man, what, am I sure? I'm, I, you know, I mean, we, a lot of us did. We were like, that was challenging. But you, you knew, I'm here. I'm here because I'm called. And if I'm called, then I'm equipped. 
and he will see us through. Whatever, if it's for his glory, it's not for my glory. If it's for his glory, he'll, he'll lead the way. Same thing for you. It doesn't matter. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're equipped to do, whatever you're called to do, and whatever he, maybe, maybe there's a change in job, there's a change in whatever, I don't know. You, you, you just trust him. Trust him. Don't lean on your understanding. Don't, don't, don't try and, if this happened, if I, I did that, or if, I, if this, or that, then your mind's going, stop it. That's leaning on your understanding. Just trust him in it. Amen? Amen. Trust him in it. All right. Praise God. 